The nephew in question is James. He's nearly an adult. The other nephew and nieces in question are Cole, 28 male, and Melody, 30 female, and Bryony, 30 female. My sister is the biological mother of Cole, Melody, and Bryony. Their father died when the kids were little. My sister married James's dad 15 years ago, and she never formally adopted him but did raise him as her son. There was a lot of tension and conflict in the home, and Cole, Melody, and Bryony all moved out immediately upon graduating and turning 18. The relationship with my sister then ended. It also ended with James and his father. I stayed in contact with the three of them though and have always known where they are and that they are not interested in reconciliation. Ever since my sister took on James as her own, they've allowed him to believe she is his biological mother and that the other kids are his biological siblings, and it was only a few years ago I realized he thought they shared the same father as well. My sister and her husband have always encouraged James to believe that his siblings love and want to know him and that they will have a relationship one day. He's been craving that more in the last two and a half years or so. He's mentioned it several times. Some family members and I tried to convince his parents to tell him the biological truth so he's not faced with it from people who will not care about cushioning his feelings or ensuring he's okay. They refused. My sister said there's no biological truth. They are the parents and all four of their kids and it ends there. James has been talking to me a lot about finding his siblings and being excited to have them back in his life. He mentioned how maybe he could reconcile their parents and them too, and how he hoped to prove he never replaced them and that he knows it must have been hard to have a baby come into the family so much later. He believed that that was what the estrangement was about, what his parents told him. I decided he needed to know after my sister and her husband refused to talk to him again, so I was honest. My sister wasn't his bio mom, and his dad was not their bio dad. They were not blood siblings. I told him I loved him and it didn't make him less of my nephew, but I didn't want him blindsided by not getting the response he was expecting. He asked me if they would actually want a relationship with him. I told him no. He confronted his parents about the lies and how they set him up. My sister called and told me I was an idiot and stepped out of my place by telling him what I did without her and her husband's consent. I can see my nephew, James, struggling and trying to work out his head after the truth, making my sister's words hit harder. Am I the idiot? So, you're telling me he spent almost a decade believing he was responsible for his family breaking apart and struggling with that guilt, and your sister and her husband just let him? OMG, that poor boy would spend a lifetime trying to heal something using the wrong medicine if you weren't honest with him. Now he can factor in this new truth in his contact with his siblings if he continues to reach out. He must know the truth. Honestly, it's important for other reasons, like medically. I can't believe how absolutely selfish his parents have been, not only lying to him but giving him that guilt of simply being born on top of it. How did they honestly see this panning out? Not the idiot. I hate it when people try to say it's none of your business and that you should keep out of it when someone is actively hurting someone. This could have been worse if you hadn't intervened, OP. She's only mad for being called out because she knows she messed up. I feel bad for all four of them, but she and her husband are the worst. These kinds of lies always come out. Better sooner rather than later, in my opinion. And he's close enough to 18 that sister's opinion isn't all that important anymore. It sounds like your sister was caught up in a happy family fantasy. And it's a weird happy family fantasy when three of your kids have estranged themselves and you're teaching the fourth that it was his fault. It was cruel to lie to him about his parentage and then set him up to be blindsided when he finally sought out his other family members. You did him a kindness by telling him the truth before he went on that journey. I was recently a bridesmaid for my best friend, her only bridesmaid, so many of the bridal duties fell to me. We'd been best friends since I was a teen, so I was fine with all this work. Quick info, I have health issues that lead to extreme fatigue as a symptom. The day before the wedding, I basically single-handedly set up a reception while she talked with some family and friends, which was fine. As I was wrapping up, she told me she needed my help sewing a button on her wedding dress, as her aunt hadn't fully finished the alterations. I told her, of course I'd do this, and she said she'd call up her aunt to walk me through what needed to be done. I had a bad feeling about this as it's only one button that hardly needs a walkthrough, but I put it down to my friend being overly worried as it's her wedding dress. It wasn't one button. I got to her home and we got on the phone with her aunt. It's six buttons, the clasps to attach her cloak which needed to be hemmed, and the corset lacing required adjusting. 
I was angry, but not at my friend. I figured she didn't know how bad it was. It had been her aunt's job to alter the dress. A little quick info, she bought a cheap dress figuring aunt could alter it. I fixed the dress, having to stay up till 3am to do so, then I had to be up at 6am to be ready for the wedding. After we were ready for the wedding, my friend told me she'd forgotten to ask me to do this yesterday and asked if I'd sew Marvel patches onto her garter belt for her as a surprise for her fiancé. I agreed, albeit unhappily, as my hands were in agony from sewing into the early morning. So we got through the wedding. My friend promised me that I could go back to nap before the reception this evening, as there were a few hours between lunch and reception. That's basically all that was keeping me going. But then plans change, and she needs me to stay with her and not go back to nap. So I stay as I don't want to leave her alone and drink way too much coffee to try and remain semi-human, even though my body aches and I'm exhausted. Despite this, I'm struggling to stay awake at the reception and manage until the food is served and eaten and the first dance happens. I figure I've seen all the important parts and go to my friend telling her I need to go home now to sleep as I literally cannot stay upright anymore. She got upset at me saying how I wasn't allowed to leave and she needed me by her side, how I was her only bridesmaid so I had to stay until the very end in case she needed me and how I needed to greet guests who turned up late. I got upset at this and told her to get over herself, pointing out all I'd done for her so far and that I loved her, but there were limits with my health concerns. So I left and slept for about 14 hours, waking up the next day with a migraine and various aches. She's upset, thinking I ruined her day and that I'm selfish for not putting her first, that I was needed by her side and how a real friend would prioritize her day. So, am I the idiot for leaving early? She used you as her seamstress, wedding decorator and planner, and a goddamn doorman and greeter. You didn't ruin her day. She ruined it by using and abusing you. Not the idiot, and I guarantee you avoided another late night as head of the cleanup crew. I'm sorry, what crew? It would have just been her. When I got married, I had one bridesmaid as well. She literally walked down the aisle and then held my bouquet and engagement ring until I took them off her. If I'd known I'd had a virtual slave for the day, I would have utilized her much better. That dress should not have been left to the last minute, nor the garter. She could have asked some friends or groomsmen to help set up, and she could have asked her mom or aunt or other friends to greet late guests. To expect one person to do all that while all she had to do was smile and have fun is unreasonable. I wouldn't consider this individual a friend. Full Disclosure I, 47 male, never witnessed anything myself and don't really know these people. Everything I'm about to write comes from what my wife, 39, has told me. This situation is about the neighbors directly across the street. They moved in a couple of years ago and are a young couple. If I had to guess, I think they're in their early 30s. We wave to each other when we see each other and have said hi a few times, but I don't know their names. I'll just call them Bob and Susan. Apparently, Bob leaves for work earlier and comes home later than Susan. My wife has a hybrid schedule where she works part of the week at the office and part of it at home. Her home office is in front of our house and looks directly into the house across the street. Recently, she's been telling me that when she works from home, she sees a man visiting the neighbor's house either after Bob leaves for work or before he comes home. She swears she once saw adult activities between this stranger and Susan because their curtains were open. At first, it was just humorous, but as the weeks passed, my wife became more agitated with the situation. She wanted me to talk to Bob to tell him what was going on, to which I refused because it's not our problem and we don't know if they have an arrangement. Then she took pics on her phone to show me the car and the guy. It was almost a fight to make her delete the pics. Now the agitation has turned into full-blown anger at me. Basically, she's mad that I'm not more concerned with Susan cheating on Bob. I told her that I have our lives to live and I simply don't care what goes on in their house. This answer angered her so much that she slept in the guest bedroom for a few nights. I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong by minding my own business, but I also slept alone for a couple of nights. Not the idiot! Why doesn't your wife waltz on over there and sing like a canary? Why is this so important to her to butt into these people's lives but doesn't have the stones to do it herself? Your wife is a huge idiot for wanting you to do her dirty work for her. If this blows up in someone's face, it will be yours and not hers. Let her continue to sleep in the guest room. You've done nothing wrong. Do some people not understand that sometimes people know their spouses have side relationships or that interfering in other people's extramarital affairs is how you end up on Dateline? 
I wonder if there might be something else going on in your marriage that you're unaware of. Your wife is acting bizarre, obsessing over this other couple's relationship and then punishing you for not caring. Is everything okay in your marriage? I think the wife needs to worry about her job instead of making up a soap opera in her head. She sounds bored and in need of drama in her life. However, she may take your disinterest in the neighbors' lives to mean that you're okay with infidelity. This could create problems in your relationship. I, 27 female, have been dating my boyfriend, 28, for a little over two years now and I'm seven months pregnant. Last week we went to his sister's wedding. I'm not super close with most of his family, but we grew up in the same town so I knew many of the people at the wedding. I haven't told a lot of people about my pregnancy. I've had a lot of anxiety about miscarrying throughout it, so we decided only to tell close friends and family. When I post on social media, I wear baggy clothes and pose to hide my bump. I wore a loose-fitting dress to the wedding, but it was still very obvious I was pregnant. Because I've been keeping my pregnancy pretty hidden, it was a lot of people's first time seeing me pregnant, and I had people coming up to me pretty much all night congratulating me. I could tell his sister was upset about it, so I tried to downplay it when people came over, but there wasn't much I could do about it. The day after the wedding, my boyfriend's mom called him angry that I wouldn't say anything to people beforehand because I took the attention away from his sister all night. I feel bad for his sister, but I don't think I should have to make a pregnancy announcement before I'm ready, and I'm not sure how I could have told people beforehand aside from calling up the entire guest list, which is just ridiculous. My boyfriend is on my side, but his mom, sister, and apparently a lot of his other family members are upset with me. Am I the idiot? Edit to clarify. The bride knew. Everyone's immediate family knew about it. Close friends knew about it. My boyfriend and I grew up in the same town and went to the same high school, but we didn't start dating or even really become friends until after we graduated college. Many wedding guests knew us, but we hadn't seen them in years. We kept it secret until we made it to 20 weeks. Only immediate family and a few friends knew, and since then it's been more like we haven't been going out of our way to tell people. This expectation that people notice nothing in the world aside from the bride for the entire day, because let's face it, no one ever cares if the groom gets attention, is ridiculous. The bride can't be talking to everybody at once, but apparently when she's not talking to people, they should all be staring adoringly at her and whispering to each other about how wonderful she is. Not the idiot. It's not like you made a big announcement. She invited you and you just existed as a pregnant person. If she can't handle your existence at the expense of her fragile little ego, why did she let you come to start with? This notion of stealing attention from the bride just because you have a congratulatory conversation with someone is so absurd. People do not spend the entirety of wedding receptions just following the bride with their eyes. Yes, the couple is the focus during the ceremony and pivotal moments of the reception, but otherwise, you're just eating and mingling and catching up with people you haven't seen in a while. This theme of insecure and fragile brides needing to be the center of attention at apparently every moment is pathetic. Everyone will remember this as a wedding day, not as a pregnancy coming out moment. OB doesn't owe anyone a baby announcement. She's told both the immediate families and her close friends. So what else should she have done? Submitted it to a high school class notes? Taken out an ad in the local paper? Facebook isn't entitled to our life announcements. People with whom we are not in touch are not entitled to our life announcements. And an anxious pregnant woman should not be socially required to announce her pregnancy to acquaintances for the comfort of someone else. A girl, 18, at my school is a fat positivity activist on TikTok. She films herself eating, twerking, and making the fat on her butt jiggle for the camera while saying how in love with her body she is. She always says that being fat is an honor and beautiful. This is important for later on. For a public speaking assignment in class, she wrote about how modeling should be illegal because the models in Fashion Week are skinny and tall and they look like freaks and not like normal girls, and they make everyone feel uncomfortable watching them. The whole assignment was about speaking calmly and effectively, but she spoke angrily and aggressively. I'm pretty sure her whole speech was directed at me because it's known at school that I walk in Fashion Week and she was weirdly staring me down. For the audience counter-argument part, the teacher asked me what I thought of the argument since I walked in Fashion Week. I said I thought it was all pretty ridiculous, of course. The girl and her girls came up to my friends and me at lunch and said that I was eating fruit salad because I have disordered eating, which I don't. She then said, 
You're only allowed to walk because you're tall and skinny, just so you know, in a derogatory way. I said, and you're not allowed to because you're short and fat. So what's your point? She yelled, and the mask is off. I was waiting for you to show your bigotry and insult me. However, if being fat is an honor and beautiful, as she always says, I don't see how stating she's fat is an insult or bigoted. Of course, I would be angry if someone called me fat, but that's because I don't see it as an honor, and she supposedly does. Not the idiot. Hypocrisy at its worst. The mask is off. Clearly, she's been trying to get you to respond in a certain way to prove her point. It's kind of a shame you did. It might have been more effective to just feign ignorance of what she was getting at and let her continue to make herself look like an insecure moron. It sounds like she's deeply insecure about being obese and that the whole fat positivity thing is a front she can put on to deflect shame or other negative feelings about herself. If she promotes body positivity, she should be reminded that fat is not an insult, moreover short. Congrats on walking in Fashion Week. Modeling can be hard work. It takes a lot to get out there and do it. Everyone's the idiot here. I feel that you both have been throwing passive-aggressive jabs at each other for a while. So yes, she was wrong to approach you and comment on your body. But from the way you say, making the fat on her butt jiggle for the camera, it makes me feel like you two have probably said and done some things. You're both espousing toxic attitudes about bodies. You're just two sides of the same coin.